Let's go. Okay, so we are now started on the Poptimus podcast. I'm not sure what episode this is. I think I'm going to be kind of doing things out of order. Maybe you could introduce yourself for a start today. Yeah, uh, my name is Timothy Reismas. Um, I go by the artist moniker Rika Vida, um, but I mainly um, produce and develop other artists. Okay, so you moved to Nashville a few years ago? I moved here, uh, let me try to remember, it's only been like two and a half years. Two and a half years? Yeah, it feels like it's been a lifetime, um, just because I've gone through so many different things, uh, yeah. so many like ups and so many downs and so many different lifestyles. The ways of the artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just kind of uh, it's a been long like, road. Yeah, it is, and it's... Uh, it only gets longer. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> you know? true, man. It's like the. It's almost like when you accomplish something, it's like you level up, and then there are a bunch of new challenges yeah. and new circumstances that you're gonna have to overcome to level yeah. up again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like every every opportunity brings up a lot more opportunities, and it also brings up a lot more challenges. Yeah. And just when you think that you, if you ever think that you've arrived, then you are so far from arriving. Yeah. You know what I mean. Um, and that's a mentality thing. I mean, like, I'm not talking about like success. I'm not yeah. talking about like, well, I have enough money to pay for the mortgage and uh, yeah. I can like, take a vacation every few weeks. And like, I don't think that's that's never the arriving. Somewhere, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think in life in general, it's like filled with resolution and then also kind of dissonance. And so nothing like as a whole, it never resolves. But you get resolution in little things, you know what I mean? Like this, like you get a, you finally finish that song, you finally put it out. That's resolved and that's there and it's out. But you as an artist as a whole, you're still, you're never quite um, th there, which is good. You know, it's beautiful. I, I don't think, I don't, I don't think I would ever want to like be at a point where I'm like, oh, well, I've, I don't have any more growing to do. I don't have anything else that I want. I'm not curious about anything else. You know, I don't want to like jump into anything else or try anything else. You know, because that's so mundane and boring and blah. And like that's what perfection is. And that's what the American dream is. Is it's boring. It's yeah. Really boring. Yeah, I think when thinking of it that way, you know, it's like each time you write a song, you know, there's another song to write about another topic. Yeah. That you that you meet like a new uh, just a new challenge from your personal life. Like there's so many different avenues you can you can go down in music and art and being an artist, especially now. Mm -hmm. I think with the almighty power of the internet, there's no one avenue for anybody to take. Exactly. And that's where the challenge comes in. Yeah. Because every single person is on their own path. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's one thing I was thinking about when we were just talking as yeah. you just got outside yeah. was um the idea that yeah, like some artists they'll they'll look at someone else, um, that's where they want to be, and they have like the they've accomplished the goals that this artist wants. You know, like they've played at the Ryman or they've toured this country or like all this stuff, and so they see them there, and they know that they're not there. But they just want it immediately. But then what they also do is they they look even if they look at the way that they got there, they'll often because of the lie of comparison, they'll be like, oh, well, they did this this way, so if I don't do it this way, then it's never going to happen. But that's or they'll get fed up and they're like, oh, well, I can't do it this way, so I guess I, I can't ever accomplish that. But the truth of the matter is, like, it works differently for everybody. Like, the the, the shit you have to go through and, like, the, the routes you have to take, you know what I mean? Because it's like, if, if you, we both want to get downtown, but I'm at my place in the east side and you're here on Lebanon Pike, it's gonna, the way that I get there and the way that you get there will look drastically different. Yeah. So nothing will look the same, but we're still yeah. kind of going towards the same general. The same place. Exactly, yeah. And so I can't expect, I was like, oh, well, then I guess I have to drive to Lebanon. If I'm trying to, if I'm comparing myself to you and how you would get there, then I like, I wouldn't, it just wouldn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? To like try to. Well, it's, and it's hard because I, I know there's a bunch of artists, even people that I'm friends with or that I, just have met and they talk about doing music and shit like that and they just think they think of everybody as competition in a yeah. real unhealthy way yeah yeah which, and it's like they're they're really cutthroat when they don't have to be i think artists we kind of have to to stick together in some ways i mean we don't have to be 
necessarily playing with each other, even doing that, but just like supporting each other and the fact that we are artists and that we are kind of in this struggle together and yeah. that we aren't fucking business people. Yeah. That's the other thing. This business yeah. is, is it's it's business at the end of the day. Right. And there are so many fucking people who are involved with it who don't care. Right. Who don't, we were talking about that too. Who yeah. don't care about the music. They, they don't want to take any risk. They don't want to see any growth because their purpose is profit, which I understand. I yeah. think that's still important. Yeah. And you have to have that because you have yeah. to keep the machine going once you, once it starts. Yeah. You can't stop. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of bands out there that they get to, you know, they might have released a record that you really like, but their next record's not as good yeah. after they kind of hit it big yeah. because now they have lifestyle maintenance. Yeah. And maybe yeah. they have producer yeah. who produced that record coming back from the next record and saying, hey, well, we struck gold last time. Let's, stri- let's, let's strike, strike gold, gold again. again. Let's do what we did yeah. last time. And I always really respect when people change the formula up after success. Yeah. When they do something completely different than the yeah. last thing they did. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, just along the same lines of like profit is important if you want to be able to sustain yourself. But yeah. I think if if the goal is profit, then it bastardizes the entire thing. I agree. And I think if you just, if you honestly aren't, if you just do your thing, what you know to do, yeah. and you are open about it, you're not egotistical about it, you're not narcissistic about it, well, like, no, this is my way, and so I can't listen to anyone else's opinion. I'm not Which saying, is the artist way. Yeah, 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 yeah so exactly. so many people who are like that. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, take in every opinion, but just, yeah. but just think about it. Like, think like, because not every opinion is a good opinion. And don't do something just because someone offers this opinion. Just like, think about that and just be like... They have a point because they are a human being that has a perspective on this earth and they have life experiences. So they do have a point. But does that point pertain to you? Maybe not. Maybe it does. Maybe like, you know, uh, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Like take an aspect of what they were saying. What I found is like a lot of times when um, an artist or a business or anyone gets um, an investment or a large sum of money or they're just kind of like start to get a lot back, kind of like success initially. Yeah. Is they stop, they stop thinking about every part of the process, and they start throwing money at problems, and they start kind of like throwing, like, I don't know, they just kind of like it, it, it gets in their way more than it helps them grow. What do you mean by that? By that I mean like in by every part of the process, I'm not talking about like songwriting specifically, but I'm thinking about like after you've had a successful record. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot of money there, and you're like, okay, well, these people dig what we're doing, and so, like, yeah, let's be successful again, or even more successful. But then, like, what they don't realize is that that record was successful because of the time and the place and the people that the it hit. The snapshot. The snapshot yeah. of it, yeah. And they're like, and the world is constantly changing, constantly evolving. There's always momentum. And so if you do the same thing that you did in 2010 and 2016, it's not the same thing anymore. Because it's not authentic. It's not authentic. Yeah, yeah, it's not. You're trying. You're yeah. trying at that point. Yeah. Um, you're trying so hard. So it is kind of like finding the fine line in between um, feeling, because it's so important to be real and honest about your feelings right now and follow those. But then, which is hard to do. Which is hard. That within yeah. itself is really hard. Yeah, to that's do. that's like the artistic struggle, I would say. Yeah, um, and it can often get you in a lot of trouble, and some people won't like you because you're being honest. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also like learning because you still have to think about what you're doing you know what i mean we're not only yeah still have to be strategic in order for yeah like your material to be heard that way you can share it with the world that way people can connect to it because that's at the end of the day i think artists deep down no matter the medium we're truth seekers yeah exactly and and there's a different truth for everybody it's like we're all Mm -hmm. finding our own slice of the truth yeah totally totally yeah and so it's yeah it's a lot of times um yeah, in this day and age, it's like you can have like a really concise opinion about something um, that's very straightforward and is like, and is this thing because it pertains to you, like, but it doesn't pertain to everybody. And because I think one, one thing that's beautiful about our culture is that we're growing in a more accepting way and we're getting more and more accepting and more and more open-minded. But then like the downside to that <laughs> is that we we can't accept a concise opinion about one thing because it's yeah. like, okay, well, what about them? Well, what the fuck about them? Like they, 
I'm not saying that this has to pertain to everybody. There's no absolutes. It's not black and white. Well, you know that's I mean? why I think South Park this this past season. Have you have you watched it at all? I no, no, not this past season. I used to watch it years ago. Oh man, the, this past season has maybe been its most social that it's ever been because this whole episode is are the whole it's it follows like a serial. Mm-hmm. So for the first time, they did like a, a whole story throughout the season. And it's all about our culture being super politically correct. Yeah. And like, um, just, just shit like that. Just like all yeah. the crazy things that have been happening. Yeah. So it follows a storyline throughout and it's just very good because it, it captures like the safe space aspect of our culture, how people feel like they need safe space to get other opinions, stuff like that. And it's just so funny because yeah. it points out the absurdities. Yeah of some of those things. Yeah, totally. So I just, I love it. I yeah. thought it was great. Yeah, but it is so true. And it's so hard. It's, you're not really like allowed to say that without looking like some sort of like ignorant Republican or something. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Like, I, I fucking agree 100% with that. And yeah, it's, it's always kind of silly, but it's like, I mean, I think at the end of it, like I'm a lot more interested in what someone is trying to say or like what their like intentions are than what they're saying. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. That's so true. Um, I mean, that's such a nuanced thing. It's like, I think the one thing that I struggle with when I look around the world is just, uh, th- there's like a lack of nuance in people's thought process. Yeah. It's like, it's very, like the intention like is not there. Yeah. Like they, they don't, they don't try and find what the intention is. It's yeah. just what the words are. Yeah. And it's regurgitating yeah. information. Yeah, and it's, and opinions. It's, opinions. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny because it's like you can you can share stuff on Facebook, and so everyone's the kind of like sharing things on Facebook all over the place. Which obviously there's nothing bad about that, but um, it's kind of like it allows them to say something without attaching themselves to it. So it's like they can post something that's like really hateful or really ignorant or really mm-hmm. unaccepting or whatever. But then it's like, oh well, that's that news article. You know, I'm sure I reposted it, but then you know, it's kind of like. You can have an opinion without ever having opinions, so you're kind of like you never have to put any heart into anything. That you it's do. like a meta, a meta opinion almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then it's kind of like just because it's also like if if you're not caring or like seeing the heart behind what you're trying to do, then how can you ever see like the heart behind what other people are doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and then so you kind of just like take things as they appear in the present moment and without ever um like thinking it over like you're not really aware of am i just agreeing with this because this backs up my already agreed upon opinion yes like if, is there anything that's like does not, it keep me insulated in my bubble exactly insulate yeah yeah that's the perfect way to put it is keep me insulated in my bubble safe I mean, exactly yeah. it's, all, cause it's all about safety man yeah all this shit is all about safety and like that is the illusion of safety the illusion of yeah. safety and it's all bullshit you know yeah. you got like insurance for your car and insurance for your like everything your insurance has yeah. insurance your house has insurance gotta, yeah. gotta get insurance. my apartment has insurance your, yeah your yeah. apartment has insurance because like and there's nothing wrong with that within itself you know what i mean like like well yeah it's it's smart to like have a plan B. Yeah. Um, because shit does happen. It's yeah. inevitably going to happen. Yeah. But then it's kind of like if you're putting your faith and your hold and all of your investments into nothing ever getting messed up, shit has to get messed up. You have to accept that. That's part failure. Of life. Failure is the best thing that can happen to you. Dude, your you know thought I mean? process, I feel like, is so like psychedelic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it just understands like the, the way of the world and. Um, I don't know. I just, I just really appreciate that. Like, oh, dude, thank you so much. Recently, I, I've been listening a lot to um, Terrence McKenna. Have you ever listened to him before? I haven't. That does sound familiar, though. You would, lo- you would absolutely fucking love him. He was like this. I don't know how you would describe him. I mean, he was like this psychedelic warrior. Cool. And I, I don't think a lot of people when they think of psychedelic, I don't necessarily think you have to be doing drugs or yeah. psychedelics. Right. Like you have to just be wanting that journey of the mind and following yeah. that. Like, yeah. do, you, do you meditate at all? Do you do anything like that? I do sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's, it is extremely helpful. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it is, uh, I definitely don't do it as much as I'd like to. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's especially like before I'm about to play a show, I love to meditate because yeah. I feel like meditation is crucial to the releasing of like the ego and the sense of self and if you're on stage and all you can think about is them thinking about you you know what i mean like it's gonna throw you the fuck off yeah, yeah. or like a lot of people can can play perfectly in that environment but i'm not i don't give a fuck about playing perfectly i want to play 
what I'm feeling, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really yeah. want to be there and not be taken away to let the hypothetical of this person's, you know, vision of me and who they think I am. That's not what it's about, and it's not who gives a fuck what they think you are, you know what I mean? Um, not to say that, you know, you should just kind of, like, try to fuck everybody else over. It's, it's not, like, that kind of no, thing. No, no. Because it's being authentic to your true self. Yeah, exactly. And um, to that true inner artist and bringing it alive. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that's what, that's what like, I think, like, rock and roll is. You know, it's not, um, it's, it's just kind of the idea of this is what I'm doing, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it, like, explosively, and I'm going to, you know, be extroverted about it yeah. and, as, and loud about it. And, but I don't think that it's... I don't think that it's rebellion, which is a lot of people think that it's it's rebellion. It's not rebellion because I mean, if you're just a a rebel without a cause, then you're only really rebelling against yourself, and yeah. like, ultimately you're only really getting in the way of yourself. And so it's like it's it's never to do anything just to spite someone or like just to like just to show them like yeah. oh I'll show them one day like that bullshit mentality. That's not what it's about. But that's just, like the young artist. I think yeah. when you're first starting out, is you yeah. want you do want to like rebel, and that's where the, the youth comes in. But again, everybody's path being different. For me, I had a turning point, and I just thought, well, it's time to to kind of grow past that, where I stopped looking outward mm-hmm. at my circumstances, yeah. and I started looking inward yeah. at the circumstances and thinking, like, well, what did what were my actions that got me here? Yeah, and what can I do? To change a situation that I'm in, yeah. Either for better or if I'm unhappy, yeah. Like, why did I get here, and how can I change that? Yeah, exactly. And that's looking at like really what are my my real intentions. You know, yeah. like you can be going along, you can think that you're doing something for this reason, uh, but then, I mean, the brains are very, very complex and intricate things that often we don't know why we're doing what it is that we're doing. Um, and if we're not even open to it, then how can we ever change our yeah. path? Otherwise, we'll just be at, we'll just always be reacting to everything else that's coming along, and we'll just be at this, the expense of the waves, you know, just getting tossed along as opposed to like going in a direction, you know what I mean? Being being pulled towards something um, that's Absolutely. that isn't all of this chaos. Yeah, well, I think there's just so much unknown, and we're living in the age of science right now, which mm-hmm. is good. Yeah, but I, I don't agree. think molecules can explain everything. Right. And I, I don't necessarily, I don't know, I'm not religious, I'm not, I wouldn't even say I'm agnostic or an atheist, like, I just am, yeah. I'm living, I'm living in this, in this dimension right now, in, in this yeah. universe, yeah. as we see it right now, yeah. through our experience, but yeah. I think it's constantly ever-changing, and there are a bunch of things, like, I was thinking about this the other day, humanity, for example, I feel like we're in our teenage years, mm-hmm. where we're just rebelling because we're rebelling right now. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't, we're a rebel without a cause. Yeah. We don't yeah. really know who we are yet, we're yeah. starting to figure it out. Yeah. That's a painful period yeah. in someone's life. Yeah. When you're, when you're growing up, it's yeah. like humanity is starting to grow up. Growing pains. And all of this yeah. shit that's happening in the USA worldwide, we're all struggling because we're finally starting to grow past the old way of things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, yeah. I've been thinking along those same lines for the longest time. But it's, it's really hard to, like, for most people to look at humanity as that bigger picture mm-hmm. and as that collective. As an conscious, organism. As an organism, as yeah. a collective of, of different, yes, def, uh, embrace the difference, embrace yeah. the diversity. But at the same time, it is, a, a, we're all much more like than yeah. we think. You know what I mean? We're all much more connected to the same thing. Our bodies more. all work the same way. Exactly. Um, but yeah, along those same lines of like people always like worrying about everything that's going on and all this other stuff, and I'm like, this is a necessary good thing. Like it sucks in the moment. Yeah, it does, and it's not. It, it sometimes it is ugly, and sometimes it isn't good in the sense of like altruistic. Doesn't make you feel good. Doesn't make you feel good, yeah. and people are shitty, and evil things happen. You yeah, know what I mean, and people kill people, and people rape people, and people yeah. rape children. Yeah, all of that shit. It's not good, but there's a reason that it's happening and yeah. if and if it doesn't if you don't look at figure out what the reason is and if it doesn't happen then it's never going to be dealt with you know what i mean like if if, if shit doesn't that's fall a, apart, such a great way of fucking putting it but keep yeah. going yes yeah because like yeah if you don't fail because a lot of people can live really great great lives you know what i mean and it's uh they they get everything they wanted they don't have to go through any struggle um and that's fantastic but i wonder how much of it 
how much depth and richness in life are there? How much experience do they actually have? Yeah. 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 And like, it's, what, what is their actual experience? Yeah, totally. And it's all a perception thing, because it's like, maybe if their lives got fucked up every once in a while and shit fell apart, then they might actually, their perceptive, their perception might, like, grow a little bit in depth and understanding and appreciating the present moment, you know what I mean? Because of that. Because it's, if you, yeah, because it's all relative. It's like, I appreciate this present moment, not only because I'm excited about the future, and I know shit's going to happen in the future, ugly shit's going to happen in my future, but I'm not worried about that, because I know that I've gone through ugly shit, and yeah. I'm still here right now. And, and you're going to be able to overcome whatever it is that comes your way. Yeah, and I'm so stoked that I'm here as opposed to where I was five years ago, you know what I mean? Um, but I still appreciate where I was five years yeah. ago. I'm so stoked because about it. Because it took you, it took you those experiences to get here to where you are now. Ex yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah. And like, I think all of this stuff, it, it really does pertain to music and what's happening in the music industry. Cause yeah, there is so much change, you know, like yeah. social change, environmental change, political change and music or as people's perception of music is changing a lot. And as far as the, the earnest desire to want something that's authentic, um, and, and speaks to the level of depth as opposed to you know, I mean, like I've I have no qualms with dance songs and like pop songs. You know, like there's a time to there's a time to party and there's a time to dance and like it doesn't all have to be like really depth, like ugly truth seeking. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't all have to be that way by any means. And you got to appreciate that that for a time and a place. Yeah, but, for sure. But when someone's only as asphyxiated with having the the good time, the happy times, um, that they'll just kind of like block out anything else that's happening yeah then um yeah then it just kind of becomes shallow and thin and trying. it's like uh brave new world by aldous huxley do you know that book i don't know that book you would like it so it's about basically it's been a, i read this back in high school it's been a long time since i read it but it's about um this dystopian society mm -hmm. but one of the things that they talk about is this shit zone that people take whenever they start to feel bad mm -hmm. and it just it's scary how accurate the book is. It just reminds me of people like taking Xanax and shit like that mm -hmm. now to kind of mask whatever those emotions deep down inside with them that they haven't dealt with yet. Yeah. Like something, and I, I understand, you know, some people need stuff to get through debt. That's fine. Yeah. But I think if our culture really taught us about how to look inward, because yeah. that's the one thing that we're never fucking taught. Yeah. We're never fucking taught to how yeah. to deal with this human experience. Yeah. And it's a beautiful, profound, yeah. painful thing. Yeah. And you go through life and you have to realize, like you were kind of saying, that there are going to be peaks and there are going to be valleys. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some really hard times. There are going to be easy times. For yeah. me, personally, we were kind of talking about this before we started today, but yeah. me moving to Nashville, I've been here for like a year. I was in a bad living situation. Yeah. I was in a job I fucking hated. Yeah. And I was miserable. Yeah. But I started realizing probably around month eight or month nine, I was like, wow, this is all just really my perception and it's all in my mind. The situations I was in mm -hmm. weren't good, mm -hmm. but it's like, how can I deal with these with the tools that I have to yeah. get to where I want to be? Yeah. So now I'm not at that job and yeah. I'm not in that living situation yeah. anymore. Yeah, exactly. And it's like a stressful time of anxiety, but I know I've already weathered a lot to get to this point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stoked for you, man. I think that you're like, regardless of uh, certain facets of it. I think yeah. you're in a much better place now than you yeah. then. Yeah. Even though you may have had, you know, s superficially you may have had more, but yeah. uh, you know, it's not, if you're like in, going in the right direction. Yeah. 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 I, th I think that's kind of what the, the beauty is because it's just like, I think as an artist, I would call myself like an entrepreneur in a way too, because you kind of have to be, you do, yeah, you, really you do. have to be, if you're going to be a musician now, there's no way around it. Yeah. And it's just, you have to be willing to take calculated risk mm -hmm. and you might not see the reward until later on. You might have yeah. to deal with the shit right up front. That's which yeah. is kind of what the situation I was in is like yeah. dealing with all the bad shit, but I know eventually all that's going to settle Yeah, and the storm will calm down and then I'll be at the other end of it. Totally, man. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like taking those risks and thinking kind of like, cause everyone just like wants it now. And the way that we think that life works is on some sort of like linear scale. We think that it just like works straight like this, and then I do this, and then this consequence. And it's I get a series this. of zigzags and s swirls. Yeah, yeah and it's, unknown. it's not even one line. No. It's, it's all like reactionary. It's kind of like more like a spider web. That yeah. every little thing that you do is always going out into different directions. You know, like that's action. a great way to describe it. To yeah, that's um, it. Helps in kind of like wrapping your mind around like 
doing seemingly monotonous shit sometimes. You know yeah. what I mean? Because like not everything you have to do is fun. Yeah. Not everything you have to do isn't hard work. Um, but but it's necessary. necessary. Yeah, yeah, that's a perfect way to describe it. Necessary. Yeah, because it kind of like even if you don't see the reward right away, you know that you're you're building something, and it's um. But it yeah, I think there's there is this one danger in um in the idea behind. So like you, what you were saying earlier about people wanting authenticity and, and truth, and then artists um, being competitive against each other. But it's like no, we there's real, realistically there's no reason why an artist should feel threatened or compete with another artist because of the nature of the business that we do. That realistically, yeah. like your success is my success because it's because it's not like it's not a sport thing. You yeah, know I mean it's not we're actually not competing at all. Yeah, unless in some specific situation when like you want to get this gig and I want to get the exact same gig, then you can look at it as competition, but it still isn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but along the same lines, a lot of musicians are starting to realize that. So they're starting to build these networks, these like spider network um, with their relationships that they have with a lot of other artists. And like, I support you and you support me and we support each other and all of this stuff, which is all really awesome. It's a huge step in the right direction. But what I found in Nashville is there seems to be like this type of thing going back to intention where it's it's like they're doing that, but it's all it feels really fake. Like it's like I'm actually only supporting you so that I can get ahead. Yeah, um, and, and that's the like the ugly side. Yeah, 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 and it's like yeah, I'll support you, and it's it's kind of like all like really smiles and friendly, and everyone's like, yeah, we're building a team, and like oh, we all like well, we all have like so many great talented friends and it, it is really cool it is really cool but it often in my experience it's like but the second they get the chance to drop you or the second they get the chance to kind of like if they can find another group that would bring them more success or like anything along those lines slit your fucking throat in two minutes yeah no questions asked yeah yeah they yeah they won't like they won't extend any hostility towards you but they will kind of just like They're, drop it yeah yeah, um, exactly. And that's like the, the shady, flaky side of musicians is that they yeah. they always have to have – and not everybody is like this, but yes. a lot of them, they, they just want to they want to feel like they have something to gain, which which I understand. I mean, like I said, it is all a business and we're all trying to get our next meal yeah. and go out for the kill. But yeah. um, I just don't think that's any way to sustain – like sustain – an artistic like Stasius. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And it isn't like – it's so, it's very normalized to, to, to say and think that like, oh, well, you got to have like something to gain from it. You know what I mean? Like there's, everyone would probably agree with that statement. Yeah. Um, but it really isn't, you know what I mean? Like it, even though just cause something's normalized doesn't mean it's not insane. And so it's kind of like when we think of everything as like debt and everything as investment, mm -hmm. everything isn't debt and everything isn't investment. Um, just do it just because, you know what I mean? Like, yes, I do believe in the law of reciprocals. And I do think that, like, doing things like that, like, maybe in somehow it might work out for you, you know what I mean? Or, like, yeah. it will come back and, or, like, you know, yeah, you do support them and then they do support you back. Yeah. Like, all that is, is true, but, like, if that's the intention, then it's not... You honest. actually have to believe in whatever it is. Yeah. You're, like, you're, uh, like your self-authenticity, it has to be, like, the best investment in, in the artist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, or it's kind of like along the lines of like, if you have the time and the resources to do something and to help someone, then do it and don't expect anything back. You know what I mean? Like don't that's beautiful. Yes, back. and I I honestly appreciate hearing that. I mean that that gives me a lot of hope. And I don't know about you, but I've encountered a lot of struggle here in Nashville. I think this is something we've kind of talked about in the past, just with yeah. like meeting other creative types. Just because they're always kind of struggling to get their shit together on their own, yeah. and then you try and bring them into the fold of something, and it's like they can't, they can't keep up, or you get together one time with them, yeah. or they're constantly falling out on you, backing out of things, yeah, shit like that. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I don't think there's anything wrong with like, like just look at everything as as that one moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's not the future, and it's not the past. And like, definitely, you don't want to get, um, you like nothing is is a lifetime commitment um and then if and if someone's hurting you then like it's best for you and it's best for them to, yeah just to, to you know to maybe like separate yeah um and like not not like you know cut them out of your life or anything yeah but like um 
or even along the lines of, like on the Uber ride here, I was talking to this lady, um, and she was wondering about your pa- podcast. I was like, oh yeah, it's a really fucking cool podcast. I don't even know what it's called, but uh, you should check it out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, so she was asking, um, about, she's doing this, uh, Olympic, um, training gym in Nashville, and, like, they're the only Olympic training gym in Nashville, and she's like, yeah, me and my husband, like, he's from Honduras, and he's, like, a gold medalist and all this stuff, uh, but we're having, like, a problem, like, building awareness for it, and she's like, well, I don't get social media, I don't get all of this stuff, mm-hmm. and so, like, so it was like she was, like, prodding her, like, you know, like, maybe for me to, like, give her some advice or something. Yeah. And then, so, yeah, and, like, all I was saying is, like, yeah, like you may not get it right now, but it's not like it's unfeasible. Like in the same way that at some point in time, your husband, who was a gold medalist, he had never attempted this sport, and he was a complete amateur and novice. And was he terrible. had a first day. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has a first day. Yeah. And so it's like, don't think of it as like, oh, here's this thing that just because I don't understand it right now, I'll never understand it. Well, no, just like do a li- something every day. Like you can figure it out. I think people are a lot smarter than they give themselves credit for. Yes. Um, and if they just Absolutely. put an effort into it, it's just more about putting that the effort into it. Um, and then also, like, she was wondering about, like, different ways to, because they want to, like, target kids that are, like, anywhere from, like, 10 to 16. They want to, like, start getting some more kids in there because she thinks they'd really enjoy it, and also they'd be able to, like, really develop them. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, if you want to, like, appease that demographic, you have to, uh, on one stance, like, make it seem kind of, like, cool and inspiring for the kids, but then also, like, their parents are going to pay for it, so, like, you also kind of, like, have to make They it, have to see the value in it. Yeah, yeah, the value in it as well. Um, and then I think for them, like, it seems pretty obvious to me that what they need is to make a video um, that is more so running along the lines of, like, inspiring and, like, kind of, like, works with people's, like, emotions to, like, really totally. get them in and then, like... Because she was wanting to do this, like, live Facebook thing where parents are, like, asking questions and they answer questions, which is good within itself, but that's really not going to spread a brand or spread awareness or spread the people's desires to want Mm -hmm. to do it because it's just very factual and it's not going to pull their heartstrings. Yeah. Um, But then it seemed like as soon as I started talking about that, she just, like, um, pretty much ignored it and, like, jumped off to, like, another, like, problem with social media. Um, And so it's, like... I was there willing to help, and I wasn't offended at all. Like yeah, this. yeah. But um, it was it was just like she wasn't open to yeah. the help that she wanted. You know? What yeah, I mean? exactly. Um, maybe because she thought she didn't understand it, or maybe because mm-hmm. she was like, "Well, that's a shitty idea." I don't know why, but but ultimately, it's kind of like you have to you have to like be able to entertain thoughts that you know before buying into them and before casting them out, and you know just kind of like hold them there for a minute and think about the possibilities of something. So I think that's probably where being a producer comes into things for probably, would you say that's fair of as like how you approach your projects with your artist? Yeah. Yeah. To, uh, to an extent, it's so different from like one artist to the next artist. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. It is really a, uh, liquid in that way. Yeah. Um, everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's different. And so it needs something different. Um, and I think also like the, the past year that I've been working with, um, all of them say the same thing, which is really, it's, it's exciting, but like kind of disheartening at the same time in the sense of like, oh, I'm, I'm excited that I'm finally working with a producer that isn't just trying to like get me in and get me out and just kind of like, okay, here's your song. All right. Just build the, build the music around it. And all right, cool. Have a nice day. Let's work together in the future. As opposed to like really giving a fuck about each song and like thinking like, like what does this need? And like, is the song there yet as far as how it's written? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, does anything need to change as far as the structure, or arrangement, or melodies, or chords? And not trying to like change who they are or like change their song for the sake of changing it, but kind yeah. of like giving the song... Bringing the vision alive. Yeah. And it's best executing it. Yeah, yeah, the, the best way of, yeah, pulling it off. And then also it's kind of like along the lines of because it is envisioning, but it's also, it's, it's the same, producing the same thing as songwriting. It's like the same, just feel it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like never trying to force anything, but kind of like giving the song what it needs or what it's asking for. It's yeah. kind of like, I don't really write songs or produce songs. Well, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do write songs and then I don't, you can always hear that it's someone that's trying to write. It just, there's something about it as opposed to just kind of like, letting go of the ego and letting go of what people think and letting go of the future and letting go of the past and being right here and not thinking but like feeling and following what it's telling you you know it's not like trying to come up with an idea but it's just kind of like following the ideas that are that are 
wherever they're coming from, whether it's like the song or like whatever, how my brain reacts to it or whatever the fuck it is. I have no idea. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a philosopher. I'm not a religious person. I don't know what it is, but yeah. it, you know, like kind of like following that. So what you said that's like trouble that you have as a songwriter is following that. It's not trouble that I have, but it's, it's the pers- perspective that I try to keep with, uh, with producing as well. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the, a lot of the times it's not, um, like, I don't think my goal with any artist is to make them happy right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, very true. Um, yeah. But I do think that if I just, if I follow that process, I think they may disagree. And if, and if they disagree, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. So I can be wrong too, yeah. you know, but like, but like fighting about it, like in a healthy way, like yeah. kind of like, and if, if I trust their opinion and they trust my opinion, then like, and I think at the end of it, they'll be, ha- they'll be happier at the end of the process, even if they're not happy right now. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, because different people are at different places. And sometimes when I make changes or do something in a certain way that I'm like, they're probably not going to be stoked about this. But then sometimes like with, I'm working with this girl, Sally, and then she came in and she was like, yes, that's exactly what I needed. And that was a breath of fresh air. Cause most often they come in and they're like, well, that doesn't sound like everything else. And uh, that doesn't, um, that doesn't, you know, they're kind of uh, which is maybe it's a point and maybe I need to like, Maybe we should meet in the middle. Um, I don't know, but oftentimes it's kind of like they just get nervous about what other people are going to think, or they get um, too stuck to their own I- idea of what it should be, as opposed to what it is. Yeah, you know what I mean, um, putting their own expectations on it, which is obviously you have to. It sounds funny because it's like, well, you have to have that music, and it's like, yeah, you do, but kind of don't. You know, it's like. Yeah. Like, my opinion is kind of null and void to an extent. Um, if, if I'm, you know, it kind of feels like I'm just, like, following orders when I'm, like, in a good way. Like, when I'm just, you know, producing a song by myself, it's like, just do this, you know? And then, like, just, because, you know... You don't have to ask anybody. Yeah. Yeah, you just go for it. Yeah. 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 Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's all good. And, like, at different people, I hear different things with their music in different directions that they want to do. And some people are more open than other people are. Um... But what's exciting about everyone I'm working with right now is like that openness and that trust was established before we started everything. And so um, I'm able to, we're both able to do a lot more, you know what I mean? Because I don't have to like let things slide so that way I can eventually build the trust to let them to trust my, because every project eventually they get to a point where they're like, okay, yeah, I trust, trust, trust this thing. I trust that you, you have some merit behind what you're saying. Uh, but sometimes it, by the end of the project and by the time they, we both get to that point, it's too late. You know, a lot of the songs are written, a lot of stuff is recorded and like, you know, we can only do so much at that point, you know? Yeah. Um, so would you say you, you said that you already had kind of had that upfront trust with the artists that you're working with right now. Mm-hmm. Did you know them previous to this? Were you like friends with them? Um, friends of friends of someone? Yeah. How did you, uh, how were you able to establish that trust with them? So well, Not quickly, but so bef- before, before everything started. Um, well, I think everything that I've done with my s- solo artist, uh, whatever things, helped with that in a lot of ways. Um, and also just like kind of like having the catalog of songs um, that are across a bunch of different genres that I can send to them. And then they, they're like, if they like it, um, then they're like, you know, and that's, that's sold. And it's, it's kind of a silly thing as well, because I do think that... Um, like getting a press for an artist and like getting um, like kind of like articles written and interviews, like all that stuff, um, <clears throat> it brings a lot of like validity and like merit to the artist, it's not as far as internally, like they're, they're already who they are. Yeah. That's already there. That's already a thing. That's not, that's not questionable, but the idea is, does everybody else see that and recognize it? And it's sad that it, they, the music itself isn't going to convince them of that because they just need someone else to tell them that it's cool before they can think that it's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, absolutely. So like, there's just been like little, little um, write ups and like little things that have that happened for that may, make you seem like quote unquote more official. Yeah, even yeah. though you know, this is something that you've yeah. been doing. Yes, yeah, so like I do. Yeah, it's been I'm, living in your bedroom. Yeah, like, coming yeah. out of you. Yeah, you've yeah. released it off into the universe, but yeah. now someone's like. Hey, look at this. Yeah. And so like now, like it seems like these people like care a lot more and like give a lot more of a shit, which on one hand, it just kind of annoys me because I'm like, dude, I've, I've been doing this. Yeah. 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 It's just, like, nothing's <laughs> changed. Like just because someone said something yeah. positive. Yeah. Um, 
Well, then I think that's that's kind of like uh, one of my downfalls. Like that's something that I have to deal with. Like, yeah. Because that's not. I shouldn't be pissed about that. Yeah. I, I should be opening and welcoming and excited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's probably like I'm not sure if it's something to do with like a what it is. It's you know something within myself that's a negative that I still haven't worked out. Yeah. You know I mean? um, but it does just piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's like weird. something like that would piss me off too, but. It, at the same the same hand, like you're you're laughing about it, and you see the the comedy yeah, of the, yeah. the situation. Yeah, because yeah. it just like this whole. I mean, that's one of the downsides. Like, I guess the indie rock and all of that. It's like there's this there's this uh, manufactured cool that you you mm-hmm. have to have. And yeah, I, I've personally felt like I've never possessed that. I imagine mm-hmm. to a point you felt like you've never possessed yeah. that. and then someone wrote about you yeah. and said this guy is cool. Yeah, and now you're like, now I'm cool. Like right. no one to work with me five fucking years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's just kind of silly. Yeah, it's silly and it's sad how malleable the public perception is. Yeah, and how malleable most people's perception is. Yeah, and yeah, kind of like we were going up. Like they just don't. They just kind of like accept things as. So we're the gullible teenager right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're working through it. We're gonna keep gaining yeah, experience, right, yeah, and one day yeah, we're gonna yeah. look back on it. Humanity will, and I, yeah. I mean, I think well, music, art, all everything that's going on right now, like we were kind of talking about earlier, is, is playing into something much bigger that we're all participating yeah. in. And technology is such a huge part of that. It's kind of yeah. why I wanted to start the podcast. Cool. was because we were talking a little bit about it earlier is that I really wanted to nail down what I feel um, an artist is. And it doesn't necessarily just have to be artists or creative types. Like yeah. I can have someone who's running a gym on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's, there's – I want to learn from, from yeah. everybody. This is yeah. like a learning experience yeah. for me. I gave her your number by the way. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate that. For sure. Because I just want to talk to as many people as possible mm-hmm. and, and learn from them. Mm-hmm. Like there's, there's Nashville is such a great city right now because there's so many people moving here. Yeah. Um, and some people think that as a downside, I think it's a good thing. I yeah. Mean, there's going to be bad. Has a, everything has a downside. That's yeah, true. exactly. I mean, the one thing that I would kind of say I, I don't like right now and kind of what you were nailing on the head earlier is that there's almost like this, this, this air of like a LA here now like I, I can never see myself living in Los Angeles mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. as as far as it goes there I mean the sunshine is tempting and the, the mm-hmm. lack of seasons but mm-hmm. I just feel like all the people who are out there yeah I just I don't know something rubs rubs me the wrong way I just feel yeah. like I'm, and who knows my journey might put me there one day. yeah I can't I can't yeah. say no but and maybe you'd wake up one day in LA and you'd be like LA is so fucking cool. Yeah. Not that I'm saying it is yeah. or isn't, but yeah. I, know, I mean, you, like that's how life always works. Yeah. Like, everything that you you think about life, that you're like, yeah, it has a way of like correcting you, correcting you, yeah, yeah and showing you that. Um, yeah, that's because that's a struggle. It's like, yeah, ultimately, like no one has any fucking idea about anything. No. Like, no, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a. You know, follow your intuition. Yeah, and yeah. believe in something, and have an opinion about something, yeah. and follow that. You know what I mean? As long as you're following that with the realization that eventually, at some point, you you will be proven wrong. You know what I mean? Um, because truth changes. It, it stays the same, but the world changes. You know what I mean? The world's always changing, and so the way that truth appears is kind of a. It goes back to the perception. Yeah, exactly. It's like the perception at that moment. Your perception yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Can be can be right. Or it can be a little bit right, it can be wrong, or it can yeah. be completely wrong. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's kind of like the truth is, is more so like the heart of it as opposed to the, the circumstance. So it's like you could say like, well, is it wrong for me to uh, butt fuck another man? And uh, I'd be like, well, that just depends. Like, is this man willing? Um, yeah, yeah. Does he want you to butt fuck him? Yeah. Um, or are you guys like in a loving relationship and you know you're just connecting? On or is it level? some guy that you're crossing on the street at midnight? Yeah, and he yeah. has he wants nothing to do with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or is it um, you know, are, are yeah? So like, the truth isn't like, well, this is right and this is wrong and this is right and this is wrong. It's like it's it's truth isn't changed, but circumstances do, and so you can't deduce it to anything that is a list or even like that you can even really put into a written language, you know what I mean, or a spoken language. It's kind of like, it's a lot further stretching than any language ever could be. I think that's why music is so beautiful. I agree, yeah, yeah, it's totally. It's because, the, like, one one artist who I feel is doing a great job of that right now as far as, like, that quest for truth 
mm-hmm. is Kevin Parker, Tame Impala. Oh, yeah. Dude, that last fucking record, Currents, man, I was listening to it before you came over. That opening song, Let It Happen, it sounds like a fucking hurricane. Like a spiritual hurricane. Yeah. Where you just don't know what the fuck is going on. You yeah. have to let go of everything you, you thought it. were. You yeah. thought you were. Yeah. In order to grow. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Everything Tame and Paul is doing right now is yeah. super badass. Um I actually I saw them um when they played at the Ryman, uh, I guess last year. Last summer. Sick. How it was, was it? It was fucking incredible, dude. Yeah. It was it was amazing. Like, um I never really seen a show like that. Uh, it's funny because it's almost like the new version of the Grateful Dead. Like in a way, there's this 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 festival culture that kind of evolves around it. I feel yeah. like they're kind of at the heart and center of that. Yeah, totally. And when I was there, it was right before Currents came out. So Tame Impala, you know, they had a lot of critical acclaim, and they were just starting to blow up. You, I think, released two or three songs from the album. Yeah, and they were starting to gain some notoriety and yeah. like a. Uh, scale where everybody was starting to say that they were cool, mm-hmm. which was already kind of happening, but now they were in like all the big magazines, on yeah. the big websites, and they were getting really great reviews, and the world was kind of becoming familiar with Kevin Parker. And I just thought it was so beautiful that this happened for him at a time when he released like this really thought, I guess thought invoking record where yeah. he was just looking inward yeah. to understand the word outward. To yeah. me, that's what the album is. That's what yeah. recurrence means. It's yeah. like you have, it was kind of what you're saying about the spider webs earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was great about that show is number one, there was a bunch of people there who were on psychedelics and were like tripping out. But to see, um, to see people dancing and singing along, mm-hmm. like when he, they would play songs like "Feels Feels Like uh, Feels Like I Only Go Backwards," you know that, yeah. that song. That's such yeah. a great song, but it was so it was so spiritual. It yeah. was like one organism to see yeah. everybody kind of moving and swaying and together. It's, it's kind of funny and cool that people are like celebrating and dancing and tripping balls to a, to a, a sad song. You know, what I mean? yeah. it's like it isn't like super like. Everything's fucking amazing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It feels like I only go backwards, yeah. but it's kind of like you know, but letting it Inward. go. Yeah, yeah. So like everyone's like dancing to that dark song. Yeah, and it's like because you should celebrate the bad and you should celebrate the good. Yeah, and I, that's what the I think the the beauty like the the Buddhist approach I think is kind of like pain is necessary as far as growth is, mm-hmm. and pain is beautiful because mm-hmm. without that you wouldn't have growth. Yeah, and I feel like that's what a lot of his music is about, and I guess like let alone from everything. Um, just as an artist, as a producer, mm-hmm. like current, he, I think he, um, he wrote, recorded, recorded mixed, mixed and yeah, mixed, yeah, yeah, and mixed, yeah. I think he might've even mastered it too. Sweet. Which is fucking crazy. Cause there's no one really like that nowadays, but it's yeah. almost like he's representative of the, of the new artists. And I mean, there have been artists like that in the past, like electric light orchestra, yeah. um, Jeff Lane did all this shit on his own, but I don't even Sweet. think he, he mixed and mastered everything, but yeah. Kevin Parker, I think we've yet to see the best of him. Oh, I agree. And I think that's going to be something that you'll see in the future. I don't know if it's like five years away, 10, 15, 20 years or whatever, but like being an artist um, will eventually evolve into being a producer. Like you, it'll be hard to be one or the other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think they'll kind of like become one and the same thing, especially with technology advancing. Yeah. That people will have the ability to like produce stuff yeah um, for sure their own homes without it being super expensive yeah um and with that will come um quality like i mean for the longest time like what made a pop song was yeah it was good but it's like it was almost impossible to get the quality of that audio and that sound Mm -hmm. Uh, but as that is becoming more and more prevalent and it's not so much about quality as it is style and kind of like saying something um it'll be a good thing because it'll just take how great music is right now and make it better and better and better you know what I mean and also like artists will have a lot more control over what it is they're trying to say and how they're trying to say it um but I think it'll be difficult in the future to operate as a I mean obviously you know time and place it's not black or white but like to operate as an artist without being able to produce somewhat you know what I mean Mm mm-hmm so are you working out of like a home studio right now? Yeah, I'm just working out of my house because um, it just it just makes so much sense to do because like, financially, financially, yeah, yeah. Because if I rent a studio or I even buy a studio that puts so much more cost on everything, overhead, do, overhead, yeah. yeah. And then I have to charge artists more, and I want I don't want to suck them up their money. I want them to have money to invest into PR and to marketing and yeah. push themselves further. 
And like, I don't, I want to keep it, at least for now, I want to keep my prices as, as low as I can. Yeah. Um, so that, so that way it's also a kind of like, there's not, so that way I'm also can put the time into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it needs. Cause I, I don't charge by, so I charge by hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and also if it's a, not a massive hourly rate, it's, I can take the time that the song needs because some things t- need more time, some things need less time. Yeah. And that way, um, everyone's getting, you know, what they're putting into it. Um, and that's also not draining them completely. Plus it's also a tax write off. Plus it's a fucking yeah. tax write off. Yeah. You have to, you have to be fucking clever about this shit. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. It's, it's hard, <laughs> not, dude. Not as much as I should be at least. Um, it's, it's hard. Like when, when thinking of it, I, I've just been thinking more and more about doing like consulting and stuff like that for yeah. artists because yeah. I, I kind of want to give them give them ideas along those lines because there's so much that the artists just don't they know. Need. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they can ju- they can just do little things that are going to make a big difference yeah. in the long run. Yeah, yeah. totally, exactly. And it's so and that's like why I'm doing everything the way I'm doing it right now is because in the past, I mean, like if I produce an artist, um, and then it's like just kind of like we made the songs and then. Farewell, good luck out there. Yeah. Let me know if you want to ever produce anything. Like, Bye. And then they're yeah. just kind of on their own. And so they don't, they don't want to, you know, get this record to everybody, but they just don't know how. Yeah. And they don't know how exactly. to brand themselves either to like really make it a, an aesthetic, a visual aesthetic that is them as well. You know what I mean? It's and overwhelming when you have to control is. all those pieces. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm trying to like kind of take, um, I'll, I brand them, um, or we brand them. We would brand them together, but I yeah. kind of like take the reins as far as making sure that it, it it does look good. It's just polished, and you know, just kind of bringing my perspective to their branding after after making their music. You know what I mean? And like, really, even like with some artists, we're kind of like, it's not like, well, here's the sound, and let's try to do that sound. It's like we're we're discovering their sound together. You know what I mean? Like. They don't know what they're gonna sound. The record's gonna sound like. I don't know what the record's gonna sound like. But like, we're starting to figure it out. Some cool stuff is happening as far as like being because uh, it's all pretty pop stuff, but it's like kind of experimental pop in this in this way that it's um it isn't tied to like one type of pop, but it goes from like some like Justin Timberlake groove beat to falling off into like some trappy just like hitting hard um, to like kind of like falling off into another like spacious like um, I don't know like I like kind of got a lot of the ideas from this artist Tennyson who is like a DJ producer but he writes like really like jazz infused EDM um, but it's like really free and like there's a lot of different like flowing stuff going on um, so yeah kind of like just it's not chained to one thing and it is pop, but it's like kind of like, it's not trying to do anything in a formula. You know? Yeah. Well, that's what I kind of liked about your EP that you released. What's the name of your EP again? Edge Rica Vita. I don't know. I, when well, I put it out, I didn't think anyone was going to listen to it. So dude, I, like, I thought, I thought it was great, man. Like, um, the great thing I think about it is you kind of embrace using technology, but there is a sense of, something living and breathing under there. Yeah. Like yeah, there, totally. there, you can hear an idea, you can hear an aesthetic that you have, that you were mm-hmm. going for, for that particular, yeah. particular period, that particular is like a, a snapshot. I yeah. imagine you have like distinct memories of that time period of your life of writing those songs, yeah. recording them, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fun, it was a fun time. I, um, I wrote and recorded and produced the bulk of it, uh, within like one week. Cause like I had kind of like, I think either like I was just about to turn 25 or I just had turned 25 and um, I was just like, I haven't like done anything. Like I've been doing a lot of little things, but I feel like as far as like I haven't like released something that's like, um, like I don't know, there's just kind of like a sense of urgency really hit me. And I think that same sense of urgency is still with me to today as far as even everything that I'm doing. Um, but uh, so I was like, well, why not? And like, I just like, I need to just, I did have one song, like a part of it was written and that I really liked. It was the one called Abba Daba, but Mm -hmm. at the beginning of that, I had, I already had that, um, written. Um, that actually came from my brother who's a killer guitarist. He played, he had this like one, like really metal riff. Um, and we'd recorded it one time and I had it on my pro tools. I I saw it and I was like, that makes like an interesting, like a keyboard chord percussion. So it's like the, Da, 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 da. That used to be like a, 
That's cool. Um, yeah. And so like, and then I just sang something over it. So then I took that, which was written, written previously, and I just like kind of like, well, let's just start there. And then, and there's a lot of times, and like, so I would, uh, like every day, I just like did nothing but make that EP. And I feel, I'm grateful to my roommates. You have to do the work, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Uh, Because my roommates were totally cool with me just like blasting the same song for 12 hours straight, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, And like just building it. And there were a lot of times where I'd get to a point when I was like, as I was writing it, you know, I was trying to be free about it, but like I'd be like, oh, well, like, is, does this sound lame? Or like, does, would so and so like this part? And there's a lot of sections that like I thought they would sound lame, or they wouldn't be cool, or they would suck, or like whatever else, or it needed to be something else. And then like every time I'd get that, I would recognize that that was a thought that was entering my mind, and I would tell that thought to fuck off. Yeah. It's like fuck you. You fuck have to me. be. You have to be the artist, and you just have to fucking go for whatever it is. You have yeah. to make an artistic choice. Yeah, exactly. It's, Which is scary. It is. Yeah. And so I was just like, fuck you, fuck me, fuck that thought, fuck those people, fuck everything. I'm just gonna do this. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. So it, it was a fun process, and so like I definitely, um, it was very tiring, and so, but yeah, it was. So over the course of like two weeks. I had it all pretty much there, um, and then sent it off to get mastered, which took a while. And so yeah, it was a, it was an interesting process, and um, obviously, like when I listen to it, there's a lot of there's a lot of things about it that I don't like. I, I love everything about it because it's who I was then at that point in time. There's a lot of things that I think could be a lot different or better, yeah. but I mean, but I'm not worried about those. Like I yeah. don't listen to it and just only hear those. I'm like, oh. like... I've kind of let that go. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of stuff I'm not Which happy is about. hard also to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an art form in itself. Yeah. To, yeah, and it's hard. It's not a, you know, it's, it's not a one thing. Like, I'm better at letting some things go than I am at letting other things go. Yeah. Um, and, um, so yeah. But I mean, I'm just excited for the next Rika Vita thing. Uh, which I don't have a second, really, to, like... R- record my own record um but eventually congratulations i yeah. mean that, that's a good thing yeah it's a good thing yeah. yeah yeah it is a good thing um but yeah i'm also like i know that there will come a time and a place that i am able to and that that time and that place is the right time for me to do that and right now isn't um because i don't want to but it just isn't you know i don't know um yeah i'll get there eventually yeah it's baby steps you know yeah baby steps so uh, do you have like a a time frame of when you, you, the artists that you're working with, when their stuff's coming out? Uh, it really depends from project to project, and, um, you know, it's that's it's kind of tough. Like, that's, it's tough to, like, book stuff in advance mm-hmm. because um, I don't know yeah. a lot of the times, you know what I mean? Um, and even, like, I'm working um, with a few people right now, and... Um, I mean, I would like to have it done a month from now. I don't know if that's going to happen. Honestly, I'm not sure if that's super realistic. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think it really depends, too, because of the way that a lot of things are working with this, because we're kind of like honing a sound, and we're like, it's something that is decided. Yeah. We're taking it by a song-by-song song basis. It's, it's like a journey. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't you can't put a timetable on a journey. Yeah. Um, and so it's a song by song basis, and so we don't know if we'll uh, eventually have an EP or an uh, album or what exactly it is that we're gonna have. Um, but but I, I'm hoping a month. So um, this girl Charlotte Sands, who is a fucking killer, she writes really great melodies and really great lyrics. Um, I'm producing her, and we'll be branding as well. Um, and then also another artist, Sally Gatza. Um, who has a really cool style um, to like kind of like what she's feeling as far as even her vocal style but also kind of like the the song structures and the the arrangements and it's it's just a really interesting and fun project because I've never done anything like it before which makes it a hell of a lot more fun and challenging for me which I love that Um, but then also I just I did uh, produce my first country EP Really? Which I thought How's I would that? never do. It was an interesting process, man. I think you should check it out. It definitely, some of the songs came out sounding um, not country, but you know, but they were, but they're, they are what they are. You yeah. Know? Um, but they're still country infused because that's who he is, the artist. You know, so yeah. it's kind of like there's still those lyrics and the the way he sings and a lot of other elements of it. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. That's Curtis McCabe. His stuff is getting mastered right now, so it should be out pretty soon. Um, and I just did a song for a guy um, 
called Davis Mallory, uh, a song called Loud, which is an interesting like 80s kind of, I don't know, it has like this, this interesting like 80s uh, dance vibe to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. I don't know what it just are. It just happens. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, yeah, it did. That doesn't mean that it's good. Doesn't mean that it's bad. But you know, but it, it did. It did happen. Yeah. And it's yeah. Um, but I know I'm, I'm I'm cool with it. And I'm excited about all of the projects that I'm working on. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, it's 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 a fun time. Um, but yeah, how how often do you think you're gonna be doing this podcast thing? I don't know. I think basically it's just kind of like as long as people are willing to come on, I kind of work it around their schedules and they they let me know. Yeah. And. I mean, I don't have really any timetable of when I'm going to release yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to be starting to kind of edit things down this weekend. Yeah. Um, but pretty much, I don't want to edit anything out of the podcast, really. Like, I just want it to be kind of honest and Concise. open. Yeah. yeah. And, and kind of just capturing whatever that moment of that conversation was. Because, mm-hmm. I, like I was kind of telling you, I want to use this podcast as a way to really capture who an artist really is yeah and what they are about yeah that way the people can make when the listeners they're listening to the podcast yeah. they think oh i want to go check out this artist he i kind of understand what they're about now yeah now i want to hear what their music is yeah so it's kind of like reverse engineering in a way. yeah 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 totally so i mean that's what i kind of like about a podcast you can listen to a stand-up comedian talk and you when you listen to them then you go and you actually listen to their stand-up yeah. and you're able to make a correlation mm-hmm. like, oh, this totally fucking makes sense that mm-hmm. this person mm-hmm. made that. Yeah, totally. So yeah, that's, and you that's might kind not, of what my goal is. Yeah, and you might not, some people might not uh, get it if they hadn't had that experience of like kind of understanding who that person is. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, totally. That's really cool. I really yeah. like that a lot. Yeah. And yeah, and sometimes you got to edit stuff just to make it more concise about being honest. You yeah. Know? Sometimes there's like little fillers that if you really want the viewers to... To learn well, yeah, want something about it. True. Sometimes you gotta take out the parts that maybe they're good, but they're not. Yeah, the, the yeah, best I can say. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, this is, this is. I'm just this whole thing. I just started doing it one day. Yeah, like I didn't really think about it. I just, I've just always known I wanted to do a podcast. Yeah, so I'm kind of just learning as I go. Yeah, so Sweet. It, it might change. That's completely. the best way to do it, man. That's yeah. the best way to do it. So I figured I've just been like basically talking to a bunch of creative people lately and having them come on, but that doesn't necessarily mean like I was telling you earlier that I can't have like a business person on. Yeah. I can't have, because I want people who just have experience. Yeah. Like life experience or they have stories or they have ideas and they, they, I think they're interesting. Yeah. And I want to just, I think a lot of people would other would think that too. So I just kind of want someone to where they can express kind of what their thoughts are. Yeah. That way they can be shared with, you know, the world yeah. or whoever's willing to listen to this. Yeah, totally, man. It's really cool. Yeah. I don't have a lot of time, but I'd love to help you out with this in any way I can. Cool. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Well, on that note, we'll, we'll end things for today, but I definitely want to have you on, I mean, semi-frequently. Yeah. Just kind of check in, shoot the shit, yeah. and talk about what we've been working on. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, Cool, fun. man. Well, thanks for coming on. For sure, brother. Peace. <laughs>